so grateful. Um, first off, I want to say to the church, man, you guys are incredible. I have watched you minister in love with your time, uh, bringing food to minister to the Bazan family. Um, the funeral service for the Bazan was the most incredible service for a funeral that I've been in. I was just so, uh, presence of God was just so he- heavy in the house. And, but just, I, I think it was just that there was a unity of ministry going on and everyone was doing what they could. And to me, that's the church. And I was so grateful as I was uh, praying and just giving God thanks. I was telling him, I am so grateful that you put me in the greatest church on earth. Uh, just a beautiful church. And I'm grateful for that. <clears throat> And uh, so in that time uh, of, of, of especially um, many of you have lost close loved ones and you know when you lose a close loved one, there's nothing more draining than for your heart and soul to be so poured out in grief that it just, it just drains all the energy from you. But I, I have some good news for you because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And they that wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. So sometimes we have to be in a season of just spending time and waiting on God when we're heavy and, and, and we need strength. And so I know that for many in the house, you, you may be troubled and there may be some, you know, you're questioning and all that. But I'm going to tell you, there's peace in the presence of the Lord. If Jesus is in the boat, you don't have to worry about the storm because storms will come for believers and for non-believers. Storms will come. We just handle storms differently. And if you're not handling storms differently, then there's a, there's a, a, a awareness that needs to come into you that says that when trouble comes, when storms come, when grief comes, there's a place that I can go where there's safety and peace and strength and renewing. Amen. How many has ever been in that place? You had to go to that place where I have nowhere else to go. So I'm just going to go into the presence of the Lord and I'm going to spend my time there until I am renewed. So we have been through a journey uh, and I believe it is all God bringing us to a point of a outpouring of his presence. And the one thing that I've noticed about struggles is this. When we're in a struggle, when tough times come, when difficulties come, something else happens in us, we begin to search. We begin to seek. So a lot of times you may not understand the difficulty you're going through, but there's a statistic Christian-wise that says about 80% of people come to the Lord in crisis. Because when things are going good, they don't need the Lord. Non-believers, they're happy being living alive because they're living in their flesh. But when crisis comes, it brings a reckoning. And so many, uh, of course, the studies show, statistics show that many believers come to the Lord in crisis. But for believers, when crisis comes, that often drives us to a place of hunger, of desire, of, of Lord, I just need to be in your presence. And so um, I began putting some thoughts together several weeks ago. And um, I believe that, like Pastor Nathan was saying, that we're coming and we're getting ready to see an explosion of, of, of God in a new way that's going to just really... Um, change the dynamics. I don't know if you know, but there's like not a really a, a, a cut and dried agenda in this house. We do know we're going to sing. We do know we're going to stand a long time sometimes. And we do know that somebody may get a chance to preach. Now today you get three messages. So, you know, Hey, praise God, right? Because we're just following the Lord. Uh, I don't know what it's going to look like. I know that what's going to happen is God's going to show up in a greater and a bigger and a better way. I have lived most of my life to uh, 
desirous to see in this United States of America the dead raised, the blind see, cancer being destroyed by the word of God, by the name of Jesus. And I and I still will stand to this in this place right here today and say, I pray and believe that it's going to happen. It's going to happen, and I want to see it in my lifetime. I don't want to see it, you know, my grandkids get to see it. I know they will, but I want to see it in our lifetime where we see the power of God show up and healing comes instantly for those that are hungry to meet the Lord, and I believe that's coming. And even in the midst of the storm, I defy the fact that the enemy wants to come and say, your prayers do not matter. It does not matter because I believe that it matters. And I believe we're going to see those things. But there is something that happens that we need uh, to understand. Proverbs 27, I didn't give this to you upstairs, but Proverbs 27 says, the fool, when you're full, those that are full loathe or don't, don't want a honeycomb. How many's ever had honey? How many loves honey? How many's ever eaten the honeycomb? Proverbs says, when you're full, you will loathe. They're just like, yeah, I don't want that, which is true for people that are full. But to the, <clears throat> to the hungry, every bitter thing is sweet. To the hungry, it doesn't matter the flavor. It's filling a void, a desire, a need. And there's something coming to the house that we need. I see God pouring out that there's a hunger being stirred in people's heart. There's a hunger, a drawing to be, uh, God, I know there's more. I want to know you more. And this is the thing. I know we've been criticized for always saying there's more, there's more, there's more. Listen, I don't think we'll ever attain all the, all the experience we can have with the Lord. I can tell you this. He says that to the thirsty, they will be satisfied. To the hungry, they will be filled. And I believe with what's coming to the house in the next few days and weeks is a hunger for the Lord to know him more than where you currently stand. Just like we're sitting in this, in this house here today and we're all in different pews and in different locations and different distances from, from this platform here, there's a hunger in each of us that drives us to know him more. There's a hunger that we say, God, I want more. I want to know you more. There's, there's something in us. And, and for me, I, I'm trying to relate this because I want, I want your heart to grab this, that where are you at right now? Are you full? Does a honeycomb not taste so sweet to you right now? No, I'll pass that up. I, it takes me two or three pieces of cake before I say no thanks. Now that first piece of cake, Larry, Watch out. I mean, it's gone before I know it. So I have to get a cup of coffee and another piece of cake to satisfy the longing. But when I've had that third piece, my mind is saying, you really shouldn't eat that. You're feeling kind of sick. That's a lot of sugar to put in your body as I'm finishing that last bite. There's something in us when we're full that it don't taste near as good as when we're hungry. Ha. Huh. How many would love to be hungry for the Lord in a season where your hunger is driving you? It overrides TV. It overrides your hobby. It overrides the preoccupation you have with whatever it is that you're doing. And it says, God, I want to spend some time with you because it's been a long time since I've moved from my place of comfort to seek you. Matthew 5, 6, I believe I did give you that one. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We've all been hearing a lot about righteousness, right? We know that we all are righteous. We have been made righteous through Jesus Christ, our Lord, praise God. Those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, they shall be filled. I want to tell you today that there is a hunger coming to the house to our young people. I am looking today and I'm thinking in my life that as a grandfather, 
I, I am so blessed with two sons that have, have chosen to serve God and to minister to the Lord, and I am forever grateful that God has blessed me in that manner. And now I'm looking at another generation coming up of grandchildren, and my heart's desire is that there would be a hunger so birthed in them that they, would, they have to encounter him for themselves. They cannot live on their parents' Uh, relationship with the Lord. They cannot live on their grandparents' relationship. We cover them in prayers. We teach them. My wife teaches them a lot. Every If you come and visit my wife, you're going to get a, a sermon, right? Any young person that's been in the house knows that they're going to get a message because she has a heart to raise up generation after generation of people that will serve the Lord. Her passion is that everyone would be passionate for the the Lord like she is. And I can vouch as a husband that I have watched her pray every day my entire marriage, almost life because we got married fairly early, 17, close, I can vouch that I have never seen her lay her head on her pillow without reading the word of God. Not because it's something that it's a duty to her, but it's something that's so birthed in her heart that she says, I can't lay my head down until I've talked to my father, till I've read from him. I'm telling you, there's a hunger that can come for us that it's in that place of hunger where you will find him in a place. God is ready to, to pour out his spirit. He's going to renew us like the eagle. He's going to re- give, I'm telling you, this is a house of young grandparents and great grandparents. Our people are blessed. We are so blessed. Somebody agree with me. We are blessed. And we have people that can stand and declare the word of God. We have men and women that are men and women of God that are not afraid to pray. They're not afraid to speak the word of God wherever they are. They have confidence in their maturity in the Lord and can move forward. There is something coming for another generation that's saying, I need, I need to encounter God. The only way that's going to happen is when something on the inside of us gets dissatisfied to the full, there's no need. But to the hungry, every bitter thing, everything is good. Everything tastes good. The presence of God has been good to you. He's, the presence of God has been good to me. The Holy Spirit has carried us through storms and trials, and we have been so blessed I wasn't even sure because this is Mother's Day. And I'm telling you, for me, Mother's Day is special because I have a mother that's special. But I know that this life is just a blink of the eye. And at 84, I pray she lives to, as my wife would say, 120, 124. But it's because of her that Her son is serving the Lord today. It's because of her that my sons are serving the Lord today. It's because of her that I have grandchildren that are serving the Lord today. Generation curses were broken at a a place and season that changed. For a thousand generations, Mama, you're going to see children that are serving the Lord. We all have a story of how we're going to get to where we're going. My challenge to us today is this, is that there's young people, and I say young, I'm saying 30 and down, so wherever you are, I'm looking at this group because I know most of them. But let there be a hunger that begins to stir in you that whatever it takes, you're going to begin to seek God. And I'm not saying just feel good. I'm saying wrestle with God because he's ready to identify you into a new generation of ministry. And I don't know what that looks like, but I know that it's not going to come until there's a wrestling with God. There's not going to come until there's, there's hunger to be filled. God will meet you at your place of hunger. So if you're full, guess what? You're full. He's not going to, he's not going to squeeze it out of you and say, you need to eat more. He's not going to force you any more of the Lord. Um, unbelievable fact that God will not force on you, himself on you. I wish he would. I really do. Because my carnality, my flesh sometimes just 
you know, doesn't leave room for him. But I'm telling you, he will not force himself on us. But if we're hungry, he says he'll meet you every time. Seek, you'll find me. Knock, I'll open the door. God is looking for the thirsty. Did I give you John 37, 38? There is no fear in love. There was no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. How does that tie in to being thirsty and hungry for God? As you begin, I want to challenge all of us as a church, as we begin to seek and ask God, it's only when you encounter his love that you get hungry for more. If you're not hungry, if, if you don't know him and the level of love, if your love, the more you know his love for you, the more hungry you'll get to know what he, why. Why do you love me when I'm like I am? See, he'll never love any of you any less than he loves you now. He loves you to the maximum now. You, you may not be giving that to him. So, so sometimes in our flesh, we're like, God, why do you love me the way you do? I know. I'm not in your perfect will. I know I'm not. Do, I'm no. I'm doing these things wrong, Lord. I'm knowing, and and there's this condemnation that comes that would try to hold you back, and fear is one of the greatest things to that. Fear will keep you from your destiny. Fear will keep you from your future. That's why there's a generation coming up. Identity crisis is the biggest crisis in this world today. The biggest crisis in America today is that you don't know who you are. You don't know. The world wants you to say, I don't know if I'm male or female. The world says, I don't know if I'm, you know, I don't know. Who am I? What am I? What's my purpose? They have tried to take. The role of father and mother is is, is so confused today. And so out of that comes an identity crisis that the Bible is so specific about who you are in him. You are sons and daughters of righteousness. You are powerful. You are, you have all of heaven at your hand, at your beckon, at your prayer, as you know him. And yet many, many, many believers won't even read the word to learn who they are, to walk in confidence. And I want to tell you, the world needs people that know who they are. I don't say you have to be perfect. I say you got to know who you are. You got to be willing to share your faith. You got to be willing to share your confidence. So important that we understand that. But God's love banishes fear. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear hath torment. Most of the torment that you face in your life is created by your own thinking. The reality is not there. The reality is the fear that you're facing will probably never happen. But if it will paralyze you from moving forward, if it will keep you from being active, if it will keep you from doing what God's plan is for you, then that torment has done its purpose because God cannot perfect his love in you if you allow fear to control you. Fear is a biggest, one of the biggest challenges in counseling that we have today. People, anxiety and fear, anxiety and fear kills people. It literally shuts their body down. It's tormenting. And when there's a tormentor, there's no peace. So it is a fear of that, that God, I think, is the first step of stepping into that. I had 10 points today. Obviously, I'm not going to get there. I have 10 points. I want to read them to you real quick, and then I'm going to, I, want to, I want to switch. The thing about fear is this. For us today, God is saying, are you hungry enough to, to go to this next place with me? And for some of you, this is, um, this is life-changing encounter that you have. And I, I would pray this, that you would begin to pray for a hunger for God. If you are satisfied with your life, I say, God, Put a desire, a hunger in my life to know you more. 
I want to know you more. There are revelations that you can have in your prayer for him. He will give you revelation. He will open the word of God to you to speak to you like you've never known. But it's those encounters. I shared something this week on Facebook that really hit me by Jimmy Lovejoy. Because David, when he was facing Goliath, his brothers saw a shepherd boy. What are you doing out here boasting that you can kill a giant when you ought to be tending your sheep? They didn't see anything about him. Saul tries to make him something he's not. Goliath called him a dog. The world will label you in many, many ways, but God saw a warrior. And Jimmy says at the end, he says, don't let the world define who you are. Don't let the world define you. Listen, God has called some, he's, he's called some giant slayers in this house. He's called some people that are not afraid to face Goliath. We're coming into a generation now that this generation is going, this 20 somethings, 30 somethings that are facing the world today are going to have to be giant slayers. So they have to know God. They have to know who they are. They know, they have to know how to use a sling and pick up stones. And it's coming to a place now that we need to help equip them. And how do we do that? By staying hungry ourselves so that God can speak to us so that we can speak to them and encourage them. God gives us strength against Satan's attack. God's love helps us trust. God's love leads us to contentment. God's love draws us to worship. God's love enables us to stay on his path. God's love gives us the confidence to pray motivates us to obey, and in our hearts enables us to please God. God's love helps us to love others. In the end, the commandments still come down to love the Lord your God with all your heart and to love your neighbors as yourself. I want you to stand with me. We get some music. We have been in a season of um, a lot of things going on and um, still have things going on. One of the things that I I was just contemplating um, this weekend as things were going on is how for one family, it could be the worst day of their life. Worst day ever. Never could be any worse than it was. And then the next day there was family celebrating the best day of their life as a couple began their journey in marriage. And how life just comes. It just comes. It just comes. The Bible teaches us that we minister to people where they are. So we grieve with those who grieve. We celebrate with those who celebrate. If you, if you don't understand that, read Lamentations. It'll give you good explanation of every season. There's a season in life for us all. But I, I really wanted to end with this because in my heart, uh, I can never be grateful enough. And so I'm going to ask all the mothers. But first, I'm going to ask the grandmothers because uh, I want to see you come up first and just stand here. We want to pray a blessing over you. Grandmothers, so I know some of you are going to be surprised. Oh yeah, Wobby's a grandmother. Grandmothers first, yeah, that's all right. This is the point right here. Look, we have young grandmothers, young grandmothers. All right, grandmas, you're going to have to move up a little tighter. There's a lot of folks coming. Now I'm going to invite mothers to come. All right, mothers. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just give them a hand. Hallelujah. Thank God for mothers. Wow. 
You know, this is the thing about mothers. Mothers never give up. They never give up. I remember mom. I don't see her. I remember, oh, there you are. She's so young, I didn't recognize her. But I remember mom, uh, as a brother, I don't have a lot of patience. And so we'd be praying for our siblings and um, I would just get mad, Joyce. I'd say, they just don't want to serve the Lord. You know, my mom would always rebuke me. Say, son, don't you say that. Don't you ever quit praying for your sisters. Joyce is here, been here a number of years now. And mom, she's already seen the Bonita and Angie, wherever you are, I know hopefully you're listening today, but mom said, I've seen them worshiping in church. So don't ever quit praying. Mothers will stay with you when no one else will. They will stay with you. I was talking to someone today that was having some health issues and I said, uh, God gave women so much more tolerance and pain management than men. We cry like babies. Yes, I'm glad you agree, Keith. I'm going to ask Sister Robbie to pray a mother's prayer over you and bless you. Listen, without you and your stance, I'm telling you, not only we're here because of you, but your spirit, your faith, your tenacity, those are the qualities that God gives a woman to pass to their children so that they can be the men and women of God that God's called them to be. So I thank you for your hearts and for your love and that you're here in the house of God. And I'm grateful for that. Sister Robbie, will you pray? Thank you, Father God. I'm so grateful to you for every mother in this place. I'm grateful to you, Lord, for my mother, my mother-in-law, all of those mothers who are a part of the great cloud of witnesses whose presence has been here in this place. I thank you for that, Lord. And I just ask you to bless every one of these mothers in this room, every one of these grandmothers, Lord. You see every circumstance that they face. We all face different circumstances, Lord, but I lift each one up to you. We have mothers who are having to be mother and father through no um, fault of their own, and they need your strength and your guidance. Mothers who feel like they're in a rocky boat in the middle of the storm, and they cannot control the winds and the waves around them, remind these mothers that you're asleep in the bottom of the boat, and they can rest with you, and you will calm the seas, you will calm the winds, and you will calm the waves for them today. Remind us, mighty God, that you are everything that we need. And when we feel like we are at the end of our resources, we can turn to you and you will fill us up again with your resources. You will give us all of the strength of heaven to face the things that we face, that we can be the mother that you would call us to be to our children, to our grandchildren, Lord. We know that we are flesh and we are weak, but you are strong in us. And so we hide ourselves in you and we allow you Lord today to be our strength, to fulfill the call that you've given us. The highest call of all, I think is just to mother and to raise up the next generations to serve you and to love you. I pray that you will bless every one of these mothers today. I pray that you will let them feel your presence near them all day today, that they will feel your your arms wrapped around them and they will know without a doubt that you surround them with your favor as with a shield as your word tells us we rely on that we thank you for that Lord and I just thank you Abba for being such a wonderful wonderful father to us for helping us day to day all of these things I pray in the precious name of Jesus Amen.